Hello and welcome to this session. I am Raghav and we are discussing assertions in JMeter today and in the earlier part of this video we have already discussed about what are assertions and uh, we have seen some different types of assertions. We have seen response, we have seen JSON, we have seen size and we have also seen JSR 223 assertion. So this is a continuation video so just in case you have not watched the earlier video uh, you can watch that and now we will continue with the other accession so I'm going to go to my JMeter and this test plan and all these elements we have created in our last session now we have already seen these accessions so we have response JSON size and JSR 223 now I will do a right click on the thread group go to add go to accessions and now the next accession we are going to see is XPath accession so here is XPath accession and you can see this is the editor for XPath assertion and here you can see again you can apply this to main samples and sub samples main sample only sub sample only or a JMeter variable in case you want and then we have some XML parsing options so I will keep this uh, as it is and then you can give a XPath here and then we have uh, this true if nothing matches so just in case you want to check that this xpath should not match anything you can make it checked or otherwise your xpath should match anything then you can leave it unchecked and then you can give your xpath here so for this we need a request that gives us a xml uh, response so for that what I'm going to do is I can use some of my uh, HTTP request as well but that will be a too complex XML so I want a very simple XML so I'm going to go to this uh, Thomas Bear this is a SQL REST API that gives us a XML response so let me just go here and yes so you can see this gives us a XML response I will also make it available here so we are talking about XPath accession and here this is where I am taking my request from all these notes will be available to you and here I will copy this and I will create a new HTTP request do a right click on thread group sampler and HTTP request and I will take this up and I will just name it as XML request so this is actually a HTTP request of for a web service but just for uh, easy understanding I am naming it as XML request and here I will give the server name or IP and this is the entire URL but I do not need HTTP HTTP will go in protocol and because it is not HTTPS I can leave it blank and this is this path will go in the path field and this is a HTTP get method so I will leave it like this and that's it so that's fine I will just run this to verify everything is okay so this is our XML request and I am getting the response data as well so this is fine and here the reason these two are showing as failure because of the XPath assertion and I should uh, keep this assertion only for XML request so it is as at a thread level as of now I will just drag it and put it inside the XML request and that's fine now I have to give an XPath so you can create a XPath from your XML so there are some tools online available there is something called as XML toolbox and I will also copy the URL and make it available in the notes so here you can provide your uh, insert your XML into the big field and then you can generate an XPath by placing the cursor on the text or the attribute or the element you want an XPath to so I will copy my XML which is this one I'll just copy my XML and put it here and then let us say I want to get XPath for product list or product so I will just do it like this and you can see it has generated an XPath here however we might not require these extra links I just can do this with the tag name or the element so I'm just going to 
delete this as well as this so my xpath is reduced to resource and slash product list and this you can also see here it is something like this resource and then go to the next element which is product list and we just want to check this so I will take this xpath and put it in my xpath session here and I can just click on this validate to check if it is a valid xpath expression and it is and I know that this xpath has a value so I am not checking true if nothing matches and now I will run this so I will go to view results tree clear everything save everything and run this and you can see the XML request is passed just in case I want to check if I say true if nothing matches this time this should fail because it actually matches something so if I again go and run you can see it fails and the message is specified xpath was found turn off negate if this is not desired so that is what it stands for so you can check your xpath uh, like this your xml messages with xpath assertion now the next assertion we are going to see is I will do a right click add assertions and then the next assertion we have is compare assertion so I will add this and take this up so this is compare assertion and you can see this is the editor for compare assertion and here we can use this to compare the content and response time of all the samplers in its scope so whatever samplers are there in its scope it can uh, compare the content and the response time as well so here this is compare assertion let me put it here compare a session so now it will work on all the uh, samplers that are in its range and what it will do is so you can see here we have compare content so it will compare the content response content of all these samplers and we can select do we want to compare or do we want to not compare we can put it as false or edit so in case of edit we can add uh, you know some regular expressions as well but as of now or we can you know add it here as well but as of now I will keep it for true the compare time so when you say minus 1 that means do not check the compare time when you say 0 that means check exactly the compare time the, the time for all the samplers and it should match exactly and when you give some positive number for example I say 5 so that means the difference between the time response times of different element cannot be more than 5 milliseconds or if I say 5000 that is cannot be more than 5 seconds so this is in milliseconds so uh, to uh, use this what I can do is I can create a transaction controller so you can see here we have a transaction controller and I can uh, put some requests here because see here this compare assertion we use to compare the response as well as the response time so this usually is done for some similar requests so what I'm going to do is copy my HTTP request I will just copy this and I will paste it here I'll paste it here under transaction controller and I will paste it one more time so I will have two copies and I can put keep my transaction controller up and this uh, compare assertion should also be part of this transaction controller otherwise it will work on all the other requests as well so I will just take this and drag this to transaction controller okay so now this compare assertion will compare the response content as well as the response time for both of these requests so I will save this and I will clear everything and run it again so you can see here our transaction controller shows an uh, failure or error and you can see the compare assertion fails the responses differ in content so there are there is some difference in the content and that is why it has failed and 
I can just check it again these are actually the same requests but still there might be some uh, some change or something different so you can always uh, put a regular expression if you want to substitute anything for example timestamps so timestamps will always be different so you do not want that to be a part of your comparison you can put regular expressions for that and so on and here if I make the compare time as zero even this should fail so I will make as compare content as false and compare time as zero save this and I will run this again and this time yes again there is a failure and you can see response different response time by more than zero seconds because you can see for the first request it was the response time was somewhere around 1563 and for the second one it was 1438 so there was a difference and that is why it failed so let me just go to compare a session and give some um, big number here I will say like 10,000 or something and save this and run this and let us see the result this time and yes this time everything is passed so this time it worked properly so I'm going to the compare session and I'm just going to keep it minus one so that I do not see a lot of failures and instead I'm just going to disable the transaction controller so that it does not consume a lot of time for other requests. So this was about compare a session. Uh, let us go to the next a session. I will do a right click, go to add assertions and the next a session is duration a session. So this is duration a session. And as the name suggests, it works on the duration of the response. So, so the time for response and here, is the editor for duration a session and you can see you can apply it to main sample and sub samples main sample and sub samples and duration to assert in milliseconds so this is the max duration and if the response takes more than this a uh, value it will show as failure so let me say uh, it as uh, something like 20,000 milliseconds so which means 20 seconds and if I try to run this now let us see what happens so this is pass so you can see everything is taking uh, less than 20 seconds yes everything is less than 20 seconds so I will just make this as uh, 8 seconds so that is 8000 or let me just make it as 800 milliseconds save this and clear and run so let us see now yes we have one failure and this uh, has a load time of more than 800 milliseconds so therefore the duration assertion failed the operation lasted for too long which is 1538 milliseconds but should not have lasted for longer than 800 milliseconds so you can put this assertion whenever you want to check the duration is below some particular value so this is duration assertion let me put a big value so that it does not show failure again and save this and clear this so this was duration assertion and the next assertion we are going to see is we have HTML assertion so this assertion uh, checks the response HTML syntax is well formed so you can I will put in the notes HTML assertion so this will just check that your uh, response HTML is well formed and it has a correct syntax and uh, you can use this assertion if you are testing some website or some web application and you want there should be zero HTML validation assertions or uh, zero validation errors then you can use this so you can uh, so here is the doc type we usually omit the doc time we do not want to check the doc type and then format whether it is HTML XHTML or XML and then the error threshold and warnings threshold so this means that this number of errors are allowed so if I say 10 so that means 10 errors are allowed here and if it is more than 10 that it then it should show it as a failure and for warnings let me say 100 warnings are allowed and if it is more than 100 then it should show as a failure so I will just take this up and now I will save and run my test again and let us see 
what all requests fails so yes you can see this request failed and because HTML is session and you can see the message here the errors were uh, 8 allowed 10 so this is passed actually because we said we can allow 10 errors and the errors were 8 however the warnings exceeded 100 so that is why it is failed and if I just make warnings as well uh, 120 so that means it should then show as pass I can try to run this again and let us see the output now and yes looks like now everything is okay so HTML assertion is only uh, you can use this when you want to check the HTML or the syntax HTML syntax of your uh, page or application so as of now I'm just going to disable this I do not want to use this and this was HTML assertion so we have some more assertions and you can see if I go to add assertions we have uh, md5 hex s mime xml xml schema and bean shell so i'm going to uh, stop this video here and the rest of the sessions we will see in the next part of this series so i hope this session was very useful for you thank you for watching